Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to create this line of shapes, abstract shapes, that dynamically resize depending on what their neighbor shape is doing. So if one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. They resize, they move out of the way, some of them expand, they contract. It's uh, pretty wonderful, and it's kind of a fun little expression problem. We're going to talk about problem solving in After Effects, talk about expressions. It's going to be great. If you're intrigued by this very on-trend looking thing, then I think you will enjoy this so fire up after effects and uh, follow along won't you with this evan abrams tutorial a line of shapes All right, so here in After Effects, I've got the uh, composition open of the intro that you've been enjoying. It wasn't that fun, and I just want to briefly talk about what the problem is we're trying to solve and how we will go about solving it. And, uh, you know, this might be a little bit boring, but I promise you we'll get it done in under a minute. Let's say, for example, you have a line of shapes and you want them to resize dynamically. So this middle one should get smaller if these outside ones get bigger, and, you know, it should get bigger if they get smaller, but also this one should get smaller if this one gets bigger, or, you know, this one should get bigger if these two get smaller. Each shape, you would think, has to reference each other shape, and that would cause a lot of circles and loops, and, you know, there's a lot of things to keep track of. Rather than doing it a complicated way, I came up with a solution that was pretty easy. Uh, we're going to use a bunch of null objects, these little null layers, to do the controlling for us, so that these layers don't look at each other, they all take their cues from the same set of controls. So this is going back to basic rigging ideas. We control complex things with simple things and just make our lives easier. So how about I make your life easier by shutting up about it and actually making something. So let's make a new composition here and we're gonna call this, I don't know, tutorial exa example. There we go, that's good. And uh, should you choose to download the project file that goes along with this tutorial, this is what you'll see. Not a, not a blank screen, but what we we end up creating in here. So the first step, the first step to make a line of dynamically sizing things is to decide what is the maximum number of things that we're going to have in the line. For our example, let's just do five. Five is a very easy number. So I'll just get the ellipse tool here. I'll double click on it. I'll hit UU to call up all of the properties that have changed. And then I'll just uh, give us a uh, 360 pixel circle. Now I'm only mentioning this number. I don't usually care about numbers, but we're gonna end up using this 360 number later on. So just remember that. Uh, the other thing I wanna change about this is using the pan behind tool, holding down command and just moving the anchor point over there. So the anchor point is at negative 180, which we know to be the exact edge of a 360 by 360 circle. Good for us. So we now need more of them. I said we wanted five in a line. Let's duplicate up five of them. Now we have five things. So five go over here and we got oh, four. Okay, let's move those. Boop, just like that. Wonderful. Now we'll just move number one. Number one can move over and let's get number two as well. Yeah, let's move those over. Cool. And just really quickly, I'll just recolor these a little bit so we can kind of tell them apart a bit. Cool. So we've got our line of five things. These five things all have their anchor points on the leftmost edge. They're all named something that makes sense. Shape layer one, two, three, four, five. Good. So these are the shapes that are going to be controlled. So how will we control them? Well, we're gonna need some new null objects. Let's get some nulls out there. So these nulls should live on the ends. Let's just rename the null, selecting the layer, hitting return, and then typing in null one, sure. And then duplicating that, moving it on over, duplicating that, moving it over. We're duplicating and moving, duplicating and moving. So we now have one, two, three, four, five, six nulls that are all spaced 360 pixels apart, because that's the size of these, in a line. All right, wonderful. Now we need to use them to control these layers. So what do we want? Well, we want basically whenever we move these things, whenever we move them, we want the edges of the circles to stay on them. So I can do that pretty easily. I could have layer one parented to null one, layer two to null two, layer three to null three, layer four to null four, layer five to null five. So now, oh yeah, I see the edges are stuck. One edge is stuck to one of the things. We need to get the other edge to be stuck. How do we make this other edge stuck on over here? Well, 
what we could do is we could have this scale up as it goes over. I think that would accomplish what I'm after. So what I'll do is I'll call up the scale of shape layer one and the position of these two nulls. So the position is what I want to use as inputs and the scale is what I want to use as my output. So I'm going to write an expression on the scale, holding down alt, clicking on the stopwatch. And now it is typing time. This is the part where I type, type, type and talk, talk, talk. And hopefully it all makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, ask me a question in the comments and I will try to try to get you through. But I want to start by making variables. So P1, for example, and then uh, pick whip to the position of null one. So P1 equals that. That is what it equals. Semicolon to close the line. Say I'm done with that line. P2, P2 equals null two. So there we go. So we're linking P1, position one to so position and P2, and we got the position in there. Good. Further down the line, we're eventually going to end up with an output that looks like, looks like this. It's going to be S comma S. It's going to be scale comma scale. Sure, whatever, whatever S means. That means I'm going to need a thing S equals at some point. But I need this two-part output because this says 100% comma 100%. So I need something that is in that format on the output. And I want both to be the same number. So S is going to stand in for both of them. So I said I needed the distance between these two points. So how would I get that? Well, I would get it by writing another thing. I'd do delta. I'd write delta equals. Then I'd say P1 minus P2 or subtract P2. I should actually write that. And that would give me the difference or the distance between the two of them. So in our example, it would be 420 minus 60. How wonderful would that be? That'll give us the number of in between here. And I don't really need to subtract both parts from each other. I don't need the 540 part. That's not useful. So in square brackets, I'm going to go ahead and type in a zero. So I'm basically saying, all right, of P1, give me part zero. Of P2, give me part zero. And that means only the 60 and 420 parts am I interested in. So now S equals, S equals delta divided by 360. Now, why is it delta divided by 360? Why do I do that? Well, I'm basically saying the difference between you two, between these two things, divided by the distance that they should be when this is at 100% should get me the number one. So delta divided by 360, that'll give me negative one, right? Because P1 minus P2 is minus 360 divided by 360 equals negative one. So I'll times that by negative 100. And that should net me 100 comma 100. Cross your fingers. We did it. We nailed it. So this means that as these two things move apart, this layer will scale. It's going to scale up to meet it. It's always going to try to do that. So I can just copy this, copy, command C, and just paste it on the scale of the rest of these. So I'll just paste it on here. And I'll just update. Instead of null 1 and 2, I'm interested in nulls 2 and 3. And then... You know, does that actually work? Well, oh, yeah, look at that. That is a working. Because now this scale is being determined by the distance here, and its position is being determined by this thing here. So that is working out. So we just continue on down the line. So then this one would be at three and four, right? This one here would be at four and five. That means this one here would be at five and six. Okay, so let's just test that out, see if that actually did anything. And it is working. Look at this. The things are moving. Woo, woo, woo. Fun, fun, fun. So now all of these things are being controlled by the nulls. Pretty good. So far, so good, right? Now, the next thing you're probably thinking is, well, Evan, these are circles. I didn't want circles. I didn't ask you to make circles. Well, hold on. You didn't ask me to do anything, but uh, we're doing it anyway. You could have anything in here. Now that you have your structure set up, you could come in here and you could put a triangle in here. You could put a cat head in here. You could put some textures in here. Whatever you do, you would just bring the layer in whatever kind of layer it could be a video layer i don't i don't really care what kind of layer it is but you know you would just bring the thing in and uh, scale it down to to fit where it needs to go maybe rotate it i don't know you're being very abstract very cool that's going in around here maybe and try to maintain your points of contact on either side and you just parent it you parent this thing the good shape you know the the shape you actually want to see and then just don't look at the other shape you know, it's that easy to, to make that happen. And then as you resize this, yeah, because it's parented, that's what's going to go down. 
So it's, it's that easy to swap out anything you want for these things. So don't worry about it. The big thing you're probably asking is, Evan, how do I actually use this? Well, well, how do I use it? You're just going to change the position of all of these things here. So rather than dealing with the scale and position of each of these layers, you'll only deal with the position of these nulls. And as you move them, you're basically doing double duty with each one. So each one of these is controlling two things. So for example, if I wanted to, let's say this middle shape, we're talking about like, oh, well, something to do with maybe data or something to do with, I don't know, statistics something, something, you know, something is going to expand in the middle. So we're just going to set some keyframes, might as well set keyframes for everybody. And uh, so for this thing in the middle, you know, we're going to make it get larger, Whoop, it gets big. And then I want it to be kind of pushing, pushing these things out. So it's going to push its neighbor away a little bit. And that'll push its neighbor out a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. Push its neighbor, boop. maybe like so, and see how that looks. So, perp. so everything's kind of resizing away cool you should uh, ease things things deserve to be eased ease them up and then you should probably stagger them so if for example it's emanating from the middle here then these trailing outside bits should lag behind it shouldn't uh, happen right away so it'd be kind of like that i think maybe draw this out a little bit just push push in push this in how's that looking <laughs> So there you go. Now it's more of like a wave situation. Whoa, how fun is that? And you're guaranteed that these things will always be in contact with each other. Now, you might not want them to be in contact with each other, like your, your excellent final shapes. You might want to just leave a little bit of a buffer. You know, keep it abstract. Don't be literal, whatever. You can do whatever you'd like. One thing I will say, though, is that when you're playing around with these, you might end up, you know, pushing these pushing these things up or down, that's going to be a whoopsie. It's an, it's an uh-oh, don't do that. You can clamp down on that by writing an expression on here that would be like, uh, you know, in square brackets, you would have like value, and then in square brackets, 0, 540, meaning the first value you can always change. You can change that to whatever. But the second value, you can't change that. It doesn't matter. It's always going to display as this value because the expression will override the keyframe. So that's just uh, something to think about. Maybe you do that. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I'm not the boss of you. If you had trouble with this tutorial, then uh, let me know in the comments section. I'll try to get you through. I'll try to answer all the comments. Uh, if you really had trouble, head on over to evnabrams.com. Download the project file. The project files are available at pay what you like pricing. So if you want to drop some money in there to help keep the channel going, it is much appreciated. Everyone who helps out, it really, really goes a long way. So thank you everyone for doing that. Uh, if you enjoyed watching this, you should subscribe to the channel. If you like learning about motion graphics, After Effects, this is a good place to uh, learn stuff. And you should subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications so that you get notified when new things happen. You know, it's kind of sporadic sometimes. So if you're not notified, you won't know. But I spam on Twitter, at EC Abrams. If you want to get at me on there, at EC Abrams on Twitter, get involved on the Facebook page. There's links to all that stuff in the description. My mouth is getting dry here. So that'll be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you subscribe, I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again and have a great day.